Hey guys, my name is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is related to time series analysis. We'll be talking about univariate and multivariate time series problems. So let's get started. Now, everybody knows that there are many use cases, right? There are univariate use cases, there are multivariate use cases. Like univariate basically means when you want to do some forecasting based on a single variable or else if you have multiple variables that are impacting the problem, let's say you have date, temperature, humidity, precipitation, rainfall, and you want to predict the temperature based on other features like humidity, precipitation, and other features then it becomes a multivariate problem, right? Everybody knows that. And everybody knows about the basic algorithms like ARIMA, the different flavors of it, AR model, MA model, ARIMA, ARMA, SARIMA, SARIMAX, GARCH. There are so many algorithms. We do have LSTMs, we have Facebook Profit and so on, right? But there are very few uh, blogs or few, few recordings or few YouTube videos related to multivariate forecasting when it comes to multivariate forecasting the first algorithm which comes to our mind is var which is the vector autoregressive model facebook profit is one of the i mean i have dealt with a lot of time series problems and in general facebook profit gives me a better understanding it gives me better results as compared to other algorithms it has its own advantages over other statistical models like arima so can facebook profit handle multivariate problems well this video is all about that so we'll get started with it if anybody doesn't know about facebook profit i can probably share a github link with you where i have done a great comparison between three different models arima uh, lstm and facebook profit and i have shown you that overall facebook profit gives you a better result now it all depends upon use case to use case in some use cases it might fail lstm could do a better job but on a long run if you run this particular test on 10 20 different use cases you will definitely see the differences in the results of arima and facebook profit okay enough of the discussions we'll talk about is facebook profit able to handle the multivariate scenario the answer is yes because there is a concept of regressors. So, so this is one of the concepts which is called as additional regressors. That means if you are dealing with a multivariate problem and let's say you have data like date, temperature, humidity, precipitation and rainfall. And if you want to predict temperature based on humidity precipitation rainfall and date of course you can deal with that facebook profit the way to do is you have to add these parameters as a regression okay you can read about these things in the official documentation of facebook and uh, this is how it is additional regressors they can be added to the linear part of the model using the add regression method or function so have a good reading on this and then come back to this video so that it will be more beneficial I do have an end-to-end -end example ready. So let me show you. This is one of the examples where I'm doing the both univariate and multivariate part. Okay. So as I'm using Google Colab, so I'm just mounting the drive and you can see I'm importing all my libraries. I do have two data sets, which is one of them is my Dilly's climate test data and the training data. Test and training is pretty simple. I don't have the results for test data. That means this data is basically a Kaggle competition data, right? So we don't have the data in test data, so we cannot validate our, our output, our predictions are correct or not. So I'll only be using the training data. Okay, so training data, if you see, this is how the data looks like. I have mean temperature, humidity, wind speed, and mean pressure. So let's say we'll we'll try to predict mean temperature so this is the this is the y variable we want to predict and then we'll get started with it so this is the normal documentation or normal way 
how we deal with Facebook profit. I'm just renaming the columns to Y and DS because that's how Facebook profit works. And then I'm copying my original, I'm copying my Y variable to Y orig so that I can keep it handy. And then on top of my Y variable, I'm doing a logarithmic transformation. Anybody who doesn't know about time series forecasting and time series analysis, I'll also leave a video in the description below. You can go through that. That will clear up a lot of understanding on time series data because there are a lot of concepts like uh, seasonality components and trend components, how to get rid of that, how to make a time series data stationary. A lot of concepts are there. So probably you can go through that video to understand more about time series analysis. So we'll not waste much time, but this particular step I'm doing to do, do a logarithmic transformation so that I can make the time series data stationary. And once that's done, I'm calling my profit, initiating my profit instance, and then fitting the data. And then I'm calling my make future data frames. That means how much future data frames do I need? Do I need 10 more predictions, 20 more predictions, or how is it? So here, I'm doing 113 predictions and my frequency is M. That means I'm, I want a monthly prediction. Why I'm doing monthly? Because the date is monthly. Like we have data for, okay, it's everyday data, 20. So it's everyday data. So it has to be, it has to be day, D. Okay, because we are doing a daily forecasting of the next 113 data frames, 113 records. So whatever it is, it's quite configurable. Again, this is one of the advantages of Facebook profit. It doesn't really care what type of data do you have, whether it is hourly, monthly, yearly, weekly, doesn't care. On any type of data, you can do any type of predictions. On monthly data, if you want to do yearly predictions, just change it to Y. You want to do daily predictions, change it to D, simple. And why 113? because we have 113 records in test data. So that is the reason we are doing 113. Okay. And then I'm doing the dot predict and then I'm fetching only the Y hat, Y hat lower and Y hat upper. So the beauty of Facebook profit is that it not only predicts, it also predicts a range. So it gives you prediction, prediction upper and prediction lower. Okay. So this is all about that. And once you do that, you can also do a plotting of your forecast data. And then you can do plot components. It is very similar to the decompose method, right? Everybody knows about stats model decompose. So what it does is it just does the seasonal decomposition. It provides you what are the different uh, okay, this is how a decompose method works. Seasonal decompose, it shows you what are the different time components. Similarly, in Facebook Profit, you can easily plot them using plot components. And then you can see this is how the yearly trend is, the trend, weekly seasonality, yearly seasonality, and blah, blah, blah. And next step, I am what I'm doing is I have converted a data into logarithmic. Now I have the forecasted values. I want to again get it back to the original shape or original form. In that case, what we need to do is we have to do inverse transformation. So I'm doing inverse of log, which is np.exp, which is exponential. And then once my inversion is done, I'm plotting my final data frame. And this is how it is. And I'm just copying the logarithmic transform data to another column, and then I'm plotting it. So let me just run through this quickly. So you can see after this particular piece of code is done, if you are running on local interface, that will be really good. It will automatically create a temporary plot in a separate tab. But as we are running on Colab, it's creating the HTML file here. So we can download it and then you can open it. So this is like one of the plotly features to plot a graph offline. And you can see this is what your prediction is. Till here you have the actual values and this is what the prediction is. If you do it on the entire scale, I think it's doing a good job. It's able to predict it properly, right? 
so similarly similarly what we will do is we will do the same thing for uh, multivariate forecasting moving on to the next part which is uh, the multivariate forecasting part as we have already discussed what is multivariate that means you want to predict something based on some other parameters like you have multiple variables x1 x2 x3 x4 and you want to predict x1 but x2 x3 x4 are the predictors as well like they are impacting the predictions they are going to impact that particular variable that makes it a multivariate problem that means multiple variables right so i'm using the same data set and then i'm performing the exact steps like the univariate part but the only difference is this part so here after i initiated my profit model i'm adding the new reg regressors that means i'm adding humidity wind speed and minimum pressure sorry the mean pressure that means these three is these three variables are added as uh, regressors that means they are going to impact in the prediction of mean temperature everything remains the same i am calling my fit method passing my training data doing a 113 days of prediction d and then i am doing the same steps here i have just taken the data and then you can see on the future data i am doing a prediction model new dot predict future data printing my future data this is how my model dot plot of forecast data looks like and then i'm plotting my components everybody knows about the components right so when it comes to arima we were doing the seasonal decompose right seasonal decompose in stats model which basically gives us the different components of time series data like this similarly here we are using plot underscore components you can see the trend is like this which is increasing weekly seasonality yearly seasonality this basically says that you can see most amount of temperature increase in the week is probably during the wetness days during july you have the highest temperature of course because it's summer right similarly you also have extra regressors additive trend all these concepts are there all these components and then i'm converting my data from from log to exponential because before feeding the data to the model we had done logarithmic transformation so here i'm doing the inverse transformation of it and then plotting the same data again and simply i'm using the plotly dot offline to you know plot the final graph which is basically my actual predicted predicted lower and predicted upper right and this is what the plot looks like and you can see this is what our plot is if i just zoom in you can see this is how my predicted data looks like similar to this one you can see so this one is giving us better results you can see it it is able to do some you know it is able to predict the ups and downs so this is somewhat a little bit generic the the single predictions like the univariate one but here you can see some spikes as well so i cannot guarantee which one is good and which one is not i personally feel that the second option is a better option because we are adding multiple regressors and this is how you can do multivariate forecasting in facebook profit so that is all about today's class i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something next class we'll come up with some other topics that's it for today's class thank you please like share and subscribe the channel if you haven't uh, press the bell icon please do that so that you get notified on my future videos and yeah a lot of contests are coming up on my channel as well i'm going to make a lot of contests related to power bi tableau i'm also going to host the first hackathon to be hosted on any youtube channel as well so a lot of concepts a lot of ideas are there and lot of information to be shared soon that's it for today's class thank you i hope you enjoyed the session thanks